Um, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to chat with uh, the grapevine. <clears throat> we think- no worries. I, you know, I live in hometown, so I love it. Yeah, we, we thank you, your father, Gene Cortapazzi, for arranging the interview while he visits you in, in Los Angeles, is it? Yeah, yeah, I live in Los Angeles. How often do you get to see your dad? Well, not as much as he wants, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> a couple times a year between, between jobs, he'll either come out here and visit or I'll try to make it home for the holidays. But, uh, you know, my husband and I have been very busy lately, so not as frequently as I'd like to get home. When was the last time you visited your home turf of South Jersey? Well, I was there uh, during Christmas. I was working on the Super Bowl with Madonna and something, so I was up in New York for a couple months, which was great. So I was close, so I got to, you know, come back and visit uh, a couple times, and then I was there for the holidays. As a professional musician, I would imagine that your father was a big influence on your decision to become a performer yourself. Absolutely. He was always very supportive of, you know, the things that I did. Both him and my mother threw me in dance classes and singing lessons and piano lessons and acting classes and cheerleading. And they were just really like, whatever you gravitate towards, or, you know, will we'll support it. And for me, it was always dance. Who, who else would you cite as major influences in shaping who you are personally and professionally? Uh, family-wise, you mean? Or sure. just in general? Either way. I mean, I think when I was a real little girl, I had um, my cousin Lisa. She was with Cumberland County, and she was a dancer. And um, she was, uh, what, she was about two, 10 years older than me. So, you know, I, I looked at her and was like, oh, God, she's so pretty, and she's so talented, she's such a great dancer. And she would teach me how to do cartwheels in my backyard. And it was like that, so... I mean, at a young age, I think I was inspired by her. And then, you know, everybody that I had around me, I was always, you know, like I said, singing lessons, dancing lessons, and the kids around me. And I just am a perfectionist, so I like to, to do and be the best that I can be. So I think that that stemmed into, um, you know, taking it a little bit more seriously. But to be honest, I took a detour when I got uh, out of high school and I went to college. I didn't think of, you know, dance as a career choice. Uh-huh. I still, I still kept doing it while I was in college because it was something that I was passionate about and loved. But didn't know I, this was a reality, like the life that I'm living now. I didn't really kind of fathom it that way. But uh, as time went on, it kind of continued to present itself to me. And I, after I graduated college, I said, well, let's take a year and go to Los Angeles with my husband. We'll see what may come. And then I always had my degree to fall back on. And 15 years later, we're still doing it. So we've been blessed. Um, I'm going to... Uh, ask you a couple more questions about your your dance career. Um, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about the local area first. What, first of all, what was your your cousin Lisa? What was her last name? Lisa the Augustino. Oh, I know Lisa. Yeah. Growing up, did you get to visit your father's hometown of Vineland very often? Oh, all the time, all the time. And when we have, he's an Italian, and we have relatives all over, you know, and we would, uh, every holiday, every event, every, any, any reason, Christmas, holiday, anything, we were always up in Milan at one of the aunts or the uncle's houses, having a party, getting together with everybody, so there quite a bit, my grandmother used to take care of me while my parents worked, and she'd go visit her sisters and family up there, so I would always kind of go home, so, very familiar. What's your grandmother's name? Mamie Cordopasi. Okay, is she, st- is she uh, still living in Vineland? Yes, she still lives in Vineland. Where yeah. does she live, guys? What's the name of her? All right, what's that new room she's on? She's still in Pennsylvania. Like, near Pennsylvania, I don't know. Okay, because, you, know, you know, we got to give her a shout-out. She's going to be reading the grapevine. She's going to read this interview. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, she'll, be, she'll be so excited. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how did a girl from Galloway Township, New Jersey, get to be such a mover and shaker in the entertainment industry anyway? I don't know. Lots of hard work and dedication. I kind of never gave up. My husband and I, uh, you know, came out here, like I said, I think with with it, the mindset of doing it because we loved it, uh, I think our head was in the right place and there wasn't that pressure that, like, you have to succeed or that's all I have. So I think that with our right intention, it just kept putting us in the right places and we never take it for granted because we could be doing something else. We could be 
you know, doing some office work or he could be, you know, he was good studying to go to med school, so he would be in a hospital 24 hours a day. So we try to never take it for granted, and I think the way you treat people in the business, it, it can go a long way. So hopefully, you know, we'll, have a, we'll still have a long career ahead of us. Well, you know, you met your, your husband of 13 years, Napoleon Dumo, in Las Vegas. You were attending UNLV, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you've been together as both a couple and professional partners ever since. Mm-hmm. Yes, pretty much. How do, how, do you, how do you make that work? Actually, ironically, we, can't, we, we don't like not being together. It's, I know it's kind of strange. Everyone says... We work together every single day and not drive each other crazy. I think it's because we started our um, careers together and we, you know, we finish each other's sentences. We talk about it all the time. We love what we do, and um, there's 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 a great strength that we have between bouncing things, ideas off of each other. There's times where I'm a little down in the dumps and going, "Gosh, I don't have a good idea. I don't feel creative," and he's there to pick me up because he understands it and vice versa. So it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great relationship actually to have that, that the person that you love and the passion that you love to share it all together. It's wonderful. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, what was your your biggest break in gaining national exposure and getting opportunities to choreograph and produce for some of today's biggest stars and shows? Well, I do have to say our involvement in the, with So You Think You Can Dance was a real game changer for us. I mean, we had been working in the business for a long time, teaching classes, working on, on different projects with artists and things like that, but the choreographers were always behind the scenes. You know, you know, no one really knows who's responsible for creating a lot of the things that people watch on television until So You Think You Can Dance came along and then they exposed the process and the choreographers behind the work and and now we have also become household names like the dancers, you know, for, for the work that we do, which then helps you get more work because people know and can trust they've seen what you've done and they go, hey, I'd like you to work on this project. When we met Jennifer Lopez, she goes, I'm a huge fan of the show. I love everything you do on the show. I've been watching it and I want to work with you guys. So, you know, it just opened uh, so many doors. What would you consider to be your biggest accomplishment in your career so far? I think winning the Emmy for Outstanding Choreography last year was pretty, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable for us. We never fathomed it. And, and, and also as, as hip-hop choreographers on the show in that genre to be recognized, I don't think that genre has ever been recognized at that level to receive an Emmy. You know, it's always contemporary or it's always something a little more traditional. So it was a, it was a big step for us. And that was that was nine months ago that you and Napoleon won the Emmy, and it was for three r- routines that you choreographed on season seven of So You Think You Can Dance, and um, one of them was one of the three routines is out of your out of your mind. And I got to say, my my family and I are big fans of the show, especially my wife and daughter, you know, being dancers, and we were all blown away by the out of your mind routine. Where do you get the inspiration for choreography like that? <laughs> Well, it comes from different places all the time. I mean, most of it's the music that inspires us. Um, you know, you listen to it, you listen to the lyrics. I mean, Napoleon and I will pop the CD in the car and we drive around with the song for a week and we're like, hmm, what do you see? What do you feel? I don't ever think of movement. I always think of an idea or a feeling that I want to try to create. Then we create the choreography to support it. But the challenge with So You Think You Can Dance is you don't know who you're going to get until the night before you work with them. So there's been several times where you have an idea or you have a concept in your mind and the song's clear and you're prepared and then you find out who you're going to get and you're like, oh, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense for who they are or the type of dancer they are. You know, so you have to learn how to move quick, think quick, adjust quickly in that kind of show and with that, that twitch and... and, and um, Alex... Alex combination. It was so perfect. Well, I mean, how did you know that Alex had that in him? I mean, he's a ballet dancer, and and here you had a, this hip hip hop routine, and he was unbelievable. How did you how did you know he had it in him? Well, I think we started with the concept, and the concept was him being 
you know, so concerned and worried about dancing next to Twitch, you know, and Twitch is one of the best hip hop dancers that's ever been on that stage. Um, the pressure to dance alongside, you know, two guy routines to be as strong and as powerful. We go, you gotta get out of your hut. You gotta get out of your mind. So we, we put him in the environment like he was going to Twitch for psychiatric help. <laughs> <laughs> It was brilliant. And he's laying down on the couch, and he's like, how do I break out of being who it is that I am? Um, and that was the premise of it. And, and, and what's kind of funny is Twitch, although he's fantastic and amazing, we joke around about it because he goes, I, I always get just as nervous performing. And I said, okay, well, this, this number then is good for you because you've got to get out of your mind. And he's got to get out of his mind. And hopefully the two can, you know, you, you two can help each other. So that was sort of the foundation of the concept and as we were creating it um he i think alex is a, is a good um because he's so disciplined and such a good hard worker he could look at the shapes and the pictures and i think with lots of practice he was able to really emulate it way better than we ever expected and we didn't hold back we really pushed him because we said if you if you don't you know, the judges won't forgive you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're yeah. going to be hard on you dancing next to the Twitch. So sure. you got you to step it up. You know, your work on So You Think You Can Dance has led to opportunities to work on other major television projects like American Idol and the Howie Mandel <laughs> show Mobbed. Um, yeah. And on, on Mobbed, you have primary roles both on screen and behind the scenes. What's it, work, what's it like to work on major television productions like these? And what's the best part of it? I mean, we're really, really enjoying it now. I mean, we're getting a little bit older, and, you know, we had our time dancing. Now we've had a lot of time choreographing, and we're really enjoying work, you know, executive producers on some of the shows. And we have so many ideas for things that, um, you know, could be a part of the creative process from the ground up and then see it through through the dance, you know. I mean, the dance is the end result, but to know that we're working with Howie on how the, the review is going to happen and how we're going to throw them off guard and, and and the producers for the segment. So it, it's, it's thrilling. Every day is exciting, and we want to start doing more and more creative directing and, and working on, on, on projects like that as well. We're in the middle of uh, directing a new project for a two-week run in Las Vegas about the life and philosophy of Bruce Lee. So we're working with some martial artists right now, and we're working with uh, Shannon Lee, his daughter. She's fully supporting the project. And, and, you know, we'll bring in choreographers to work under us because, you know, now we're going to focus more on directing. You know, you choreographed Madonna's Super Bowl halftime show last year. What, what does she like to work with? She is stellar. She is the hardest working lady. Um, I had so much respect for her. She has attention to every single detail. She cares about from what she's wearing, how her hair is, what the dancers look like, um, and, and everything, you know, is she wants to be have perfection around her. And, and I love that because so often in this business you work with artists that, you know, really don't appreciate the full package. You know, and they come in and they may only have a couple hours to rehearse a number and they're like, yeah, 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 sure, it's great. But to know when you do something, um, you know, she looks at she says, I love everything, but you know, this part doesn't feel quite right. And she has an opinion about it, so it kind of drives you in a direction to, to bring it there that. You've also done choreography and creative direction for Christina Aguilera, Ricky Martin, Celine Dion, Kanye West, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Who's your favorite pop star to work with? Well, you know, we, we're very close with Jennifer. We've been working with her quite a bit lately. Um, and she's a dancer at heart, so we enjoy working with her because she has an appreciation for the moves. And, um, you know, we just have a fun time in the studio. Um, I mean, it's just hard to say every project is so different. You can't have your favorite because they're all unique in their own way. We also did a film, it hasn't come out yet, called Boo, and I worked with this Korean artist. Uh, her name is Boa, and she's a sweetheart, and, uh, you know, she just called us, we recorded up something for her video, and so every, I think every artist or, art, you know, person you work with, you have, you know, a unique or different relationship with, and you appreciate, so I, I couldn't pick a favorite, but, you know, Jennifer is up there just simply because of her dance ability, and, you know, we get to play with her a little bit more. Well, the biggest Nappy Tabs production will make its debut in about a month. I know. <laughs> how are you? Uh, how are you preparing for parenthood? And do you plan to take a break from your career after the birth? 
Yes, I think so. I mean, we have the Bruce Lee show that we're doing, and, you know, Napoleon will have to take the lead on that, and I'm going to, you know, be home taking a little bit of a backseat. But the lucky thing with our careers is we do work quite a bit from home. We have a studio in North Hollywood and a clothing line, and, you know, I'm able to do a lot from home, so I feel like even though I'll be a little, uh, I guess, low key for for a bit, um, I still will be able to be involved, you know, which is which is quite nice. And you're going to have a boy? Yes, we're having a boy. And you're expecting in about a month, is that right? Yeah, my, my tentative due date is August 6th. When he comes out, you know, if he comes early or a little late, I don't know, who knows. I, I'm new to this process, so I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> You know, as I was preparing for this interview, I caught up with some of your recent tweets, and I saw that the uh, I saw that the pre-birth nesting has gotten a little bit out of hand. Yeah, no, we had a week off after we finished American Idol, and we were going to try to get out of town. And so for a few days, we're like, oh, let's do a little dating, we'll do this, and then we'll get out of town, and then it turned into, like, extreme home makeover. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I haven't left the house yet, but, uh, and now my dad's here suffering through a little bit of the construction. He's witnessing, you know, the drilling and, the, you know, the dust and the, you know, but that's it. Hopefully it'll all be yeah, finished. Actually, uh, actually, some of them just came in right now. They're like, oh, we need to take the door off. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you can't drill in here right now. I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully the, all that construction will be done by the time the baby comes. That's the goal. I said we got to get it done before, before he arrives. You know, there's also a lot of tweets on there about all the folks, some famous and some not so famous, who are raving about your Nappy Tabs clothing line, specifically the sweatpants. Yeah, yeah. We've been so lucky. We started this clothing line like five, six years ago, or maybe even longer now. And uh, we have some great clothing teaching on different dance conventions throughout the U.S., and we were sponsored by Capizio, and they'd give us clothes and things to wear, and it just didn't quite fit that, you know, the urban street fashion that we, you know, we could see and visualize, so we started a clothing line called Nappy Tabs, and uh, and it's been growing ever since. We just opened a store uh, over a year ago in North Hollywood, so we have an actual store, and it's, it's attached to a rental studio. So um, it's been it's been growing, and, and we're kind of sign- our signature item is our sweatpants. Everybody loves our sweatpants from you know our, our traditional ones with the funky pockets in the back, and we have new harem pants and bright colors. And you'll see it on every show. You may not realize it if you don't know, but like the kids on America's Best Dance Crew, and so you think you can dance and all the packages and dancing with the stars, and they all rock our gear, which is fabulous to have that kind of support. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and my dad said he wants to try to open one up in a store up in Vineland. All right. <laughs> I don't know if we have the dance community supported there, but. Uh. <laughs> well, in in mid July, my wife and I are taking our kids to Las Vegas because my daughter won a scholarship for a one week seminar dance seminar at UNLV. And, oh, you're uh, kidding! No, no, it's it's we're really looking forward to it. Now I know oh, that, so yeah, I know that Nappy Tabs has done some creative direction for a couple of the Las Vegas stage productions. Are there any shows you've worked on that are currently running that we should check out? Yeah, well, they're closing here shortly, but we did work on the Cirque du Soleil Viva Elvis show. Uh huh. And um, the we directed the Jabberwocky show, which is uh, now we started at the MGM. Then they gave them a new theater over at uh, when Lance Burton retired over at the Monte Carlo, and now they're building them their own theater in. Um, it's going to be attached to the Luxor, but in the time being, they're in a tent and right behind the Luxor for the summer, so you could go see that show. And then they're coming to Atlantic City. They're also coming to Atlantic City, the Jabberwocky show. Oh, no kidding. Shortly. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You can check them out there, too. Well, listen. I know that these guys uh, are in, are itching to get in there and do some drilling in your in your house there. So I thank you for the time that you gave me. I really do. Much and appreciated. And if there's anything else that pops up that you think you might have missed, or you know whatever, if you, while you're putting it together and you need to finish it, just let us know.